our topic for today is that this is not a dress rehearsal. This is the main show. Hallelujah. Our topic today is that this is not uh, this is not a dress rehearsal. This is the main show. And it gives me great honor and great pleasure, hallelujah, to, to introduce the song. Hallelujah, because some of you may know and some of you may not know. But to, to introduce and to present to you all none other um, than a woman of God. Hallelujah, a woman that... I know that God has anointed with a word that he has touched her tongue with that of coal of fire, that I am confident to break bread with, hallelujah, to share the pulpit with, that I am confident that they would come and feed the flock of God and will feed them things that would not give them in their indigestion and diarrhea, hallelujah, but it would be good food that is good manner unto your soul. So I pray God that you would open your heart and you would open your ear and you would listen to what does the Lord thy God say it unto you. I pray that almighty God will come upon the speaker right now in the name of Jesus, that he would cover and that he would anoint, that he would speak through her, hallelujah, that she would decrease in the carnal flesh and that she would rise in the spiritual realms and she would deliver and say, thus said the Lord, whether the church hear or forbear, they would hear the matter, what God has to say. So put your hands together and welcome to the platform, none other than teacher Wendy, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. This morning, we give God praise and we give God thanks. Hallelujah. This morning, uh, <laughs> thank you for <laughs> Thank you for having me this morning. Um, it's a little overwhelming, um, <laughs> but I, I, I bless the Lord. I, before I greet everyone, you know, I want to greet the presence of God that is so strong and mighty <laughs> right now. Um, I want to be real. I don't want to be camera shy. I want to be real because um. I thought for a reason that I was about to show up to be a, a speaker. But when I got here, I realized that um, something that always walks with me was here before me. Because that took a while before I could come down on my table where I normally sit on my table. This is my every Tuesday table where I sit and I ask the Lord to do what he promised, which is be present where the twos and trees are gathered. So this morning I thought it was going to be just me because as being myself, I was being myself, I'm shy. And so I didn't really tell too many members or I told them late that I was speaking and I even, you know, I didn't talk about it a lot. So I said it was going to be me. But when I came down here two minutes ago, I realized that it's the Holy Spirit was here waiting. And I, I couldn't contain myself. So I want to thank God before I address anything or say anything. I want to give God praise. I want to exalt his name. I want to thank him for just for, for, for not leaving us alone, for not leaving me alone, for uh, confirm, confirming in me, you know, and my doubtful mind, I would call it. Um, and I pray God that, you know, this would be a learning lesson, <laughs> I would say, for myself. Because, oh God, he is so real. The thing was so real, brethren. I want to share with you this morning that this is the main show because when i came down he was here so i really thank god this morning this morning i want to take the opportunity to bless god i bless god and i give thanks to be a part of this wonderful endeavoring congregation and i say the word endeavoring because i know 
this congregation has a plan. This congregation is being guided to go on places where the normal, the normal man is afraid to go. And I pray God that, 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 that he continue walking with you so that he can be able to take you to that platform, that platform that will allow us to come up to his standard. That, that's my prayer for this congregation this morning. And I thank God that he allowed me to share this communion with you all. I thank God that he gave me the opportunity to see each and every one of you um, because of the time that we are in. I haven't been, you know, I haven't been around. We haven't seen each other. So it's really a, an opportunity that I'm not taking lightly. I, I, I thank God that he, he gave each and every one of you the strength to fight the good fight. Uh, I, I am so thankful this morning uh, to see us through the changing scenes of life, uh, whether it may be trouble, whether it may be joy, whether it may be COVID, pandemic, whatever it is, I, I, I know, I see triumphant people. I see, I see victorious people. I see a congregation that is striving. Uh, so I thank God and I give him praise, you know, and the praises. The most important thing is that the praises is still come with me. So I really would um, really give thanks. And I would really like, I would have liked to call each person, you know, individually by name. I don't know everybody by name, but I want you to call your name for yourself. Because this morning, you know, we are about to take a stand this morning. We are about to take a stand this morning that, 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 that from, for, not for, for 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 eyes to see and praise us but for us to confirm in ourselves to make a confirmation in ourselves that we are the characters in this main show and because we are the characters in this main show we have an we have we have a role to play and we don't want that role to be a performance we don't want that role to be a performance we want that role to be genuine we want that role to be authentic. We want that role to be to be magnificent. We want to be we want to be used to 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 play that role. Hallelujah! This morning, so I bless God. This morning, I bless God. This morning, oh hallelujah! This morning, this morning, brethren, this is such a this is a topic. <laughs> this is a this is a topic. Hallelujah, and um. It's a very interesting topic, very interesting, uh, <laughs> and I have I've put some consideration to this topic. I have considered this opportunity. Uh, I have considered this opportunity to speak um, on this well needed. It's a well needed topic. It's a pending topic, and I say that because it's. It's, it's self-explanatory. And it is saying, this is not a dress rehearsal. It is the main show. And if you would allow me to say, you know, I don't feel like a stranger, so I'm hoping that I would be able to say whatever that is right and necessary. <laughs> and if you would allow me to say that I, I was hoping that the teacher would have done this herself because this is a topic that doesn't need to have apologies in it and you know so we need some selfless some selfless approach to this topic uh, and this is not a task that i take lightly because it is not a dress rehearsal it is it is me being placed in the main event and at this main event judgment begins you see and because everyone is looking at you when you are on the main event i want us to pay close attention to the fact that 
let's just consider it from a carnal perspective. When you are on the main show, everybody is on the outside and they are looking at you, expecting to receive or, or see something worthwhile. Some people are expecting to see something that is pleasing to them and some who knows what the show is about would expect what is written in the script. Hallelujah this morning. So we bless the Lord this morning. So this is not an opportunity that, um, you know, that is, is to just be overlooked. You know, I pray God that he will bring full understanding and allow us to, and allow us, eh? Other than that, just because the fact that I'm speaking, I am not saying me. And allow us to reach souls. Because it is important that whatever happens on the main show, that we reach souls. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah this morning. And when we uh, um, have been uh, going through, you know, we've been going through the process, pre preparing ourselves for the main show. You know, um, I, I, I say we have, we had ample time. We had ample time to rehearse. Yes. We had sufficient time uh, to, to, to rehearse. So by now, on the main show, we should be without spot. I should be without spot. I'm expecting myself to be without spot and without blemish so that I can host. I can host now the, the one who is going to enhance my character in the main show, which is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I want us to understand that when we are in the main show, what we are doing in the main show, uh, uh, we have to have that Holy Spirit, which is going to, to in, in, in bring back to our memory what is written in the script and allow us to be at our best. This morning, we bless the Lord. And, and, and I say that because it's rightful that when we are representing God, I am representing God this morning and it is not a joke. So when I speak, I want to speak as the oracle of God, not as Wendy. It is not important that I be seen this morning in this event. Mm -hmm. This is the main show and we, you have your role, I have my role. And whatever part we play, it is relevant. This morning, we have to know that we are not playing on, no, we have no, 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 no writer from the outside. They are not from Hollywood. It is from Almighty God. So whatever role he gave you, it is important that you pay attention to the script and see if you are performing your role according to the word of God. Hallelujah this morning. And why I keep stressing, I want us to understand that I am stressing on this is not an easy task, nor is it to be taken lightly, because guess what? The book of Peter says, the book of Peter 4, 17 says that judgment begins in the house of God. Hallelujah this morning. So this is not easy for me. This is a big responsibility. I, I don't know if I can be a, a public speaker because when I, when, when I come to speak, I come in not with myself, I come in with the expectation that the Holy Spirit is going to show up. So I am known for me, I have nothing to perform. I have nothing, I, I, I have nothing to show. I'm trying to get to my best dress this morning. It's not happening. So being responsible means that I will have to give account for my role this morning as the preacher, hallelujah, this morning. You see, I, I, I had a thought and James reminded me that not many of us should become teachers, you know, because we who teach will be judged with a greater judgment. We who teach will receive a greater condemnation. So we are then held accountable and responsible for the dispensation of the word of God, hallelujah, this morning. So it's not a little responsibility. It is a serious task to represent God, the master of the main show, the master of the event. It is not, it is, it is, it is, sorry, a, a serious task to represent the author and the finisher of this script. I want to tell us something this morning. The show and the script that is being revealed 
is unfolding right before our very eyes. You know, when the teacher called me, the first thing came to my mind is something from, from when I was a little girl watching Sesame Street. The monsters used to have this show. When they opened the curtains, they thought it was a show and the, he used to, the monster would say, here is your life. And all the other monsters used to be so surprised. I wanna tell us this morning, here is your life. This is, this is the main show. This is the main show, brethren. Hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah this morning. And you know, the book of Matthew tells us, and I wanna be able to read it. I, want, I, I think I'm supposed to be reading our evening lesson. Hallelujah. And I would take that lesson from 1 Timothy chapter 4. I have to be changing glasses. And it says 1 Timothy chapter 4. And it says, now. If I may begin, somebody can give me a hand. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience shared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meat, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. It, if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the word of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained, but refuse profaned and old wives' fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. And I would rest there at the eighth verse of the fourth chapter, giving God the glory. The glory be to the Father and to you, God's Son, and to your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning. Bless the, the Lord. We bless God. I give God so much praise and give him so much thanks that he can bring this word and allow our minds to be stirred up this morning. And I said that here is our life. Here's our life where the show is on. God word is being revealed right before our eyes. And people are thinking that it's just another rehearsal. But I want to tell us that for us who have, who, who's aware for us who's aware that this is the main show, I just wanna give you an encouragement that there is not much room for errors on the main show. You can't really take back what is already done. 
on the main show. This is a time to apply the word of God. Because on the main show, there's a lot of ramifications on the main show. There's a lot of intimidations on the main show. And when, this, the, the, when it's being unfolded, you can't get intimidated or you can't crumble, drop the towel and quit. It doesn't work like that. And I know, and you know, that the magnitude of the pressure is great. Because this is saying, the lesson is saying here, that the things that are being unfolded in the latter days, it is, Paul is speaking expressly that in these latter times, many is going to depart from the faith. And when, and when you actually, we who know, what to expect. When you see people are falling away from the faith, you can't crumble. You can't get scared. You can't get be afraid of the pressure that is on. And I say that because I want us to understand that what the word of God is saying here, that those who are being nurtured in the word of God, the attack is going to be on us. The seduction or the seducing spirit is going to confront us and it's going to confront our very own. It's going to confront our circle. It is going to, it's going to come into your camp to seduce. You see the word seduction, the word seduction is a, that, that word alone. Sometimes when a person is being seduced, you only know that you are heading in a direction. You don't even know when you get there. And Paul is saying here, in the latter days, these are the things that we are going to see be falling us. It is happening. The show is going on. People are being seduced. People are falling away. People are giving heed to seducing spirits. You ain't know when they're telling you, come and practice traditions, old traditions, seducing you to do it. They're giving you enticement. They're making it look real. And when that is happening, we are so aware, brethren, we are so aware that this is going to happen, but we, we, we got to be aware of when the intimidation steps in that causes us to give in. Don't say that, well, you know, well, I've been in the world a long time or I've been, no, God yourself, God yourself for the pressure, the, for the pressure that is about to face you for this word to be unfold. Now keep in mind, this word has to be unfold and it is not going outside to get who it already has. It is coming right in our camp to make sure that they speak lies and hypocrisy. They're making sure and coming because guess what? They have no conscience, the scriptures say, and they're making, they wanna come and make you one life unto themselves. Safeguard ourselves. We can't run scared. I want to tell you that the, 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 the book of, of, of Samuel 17 gave us a, a, a wonderful enlightenment on David. You know, Jesse had sons, the scripture said. And I come to understand that these three of his sons were engaged in the army with Saul. And while they were up against the Philistines, while they were up against the enemy, Jesse decided to send David, go and carry lunch. Go carry something for your brothers to eat. Because he, as a father, he concerned that they in this, great warfare against the enemy brethren this is what we are in we are against this great warfare against the enemy 
if the Philistines had gotten hold of Israel mentally, they're not gonna, they would have not killed them with swords, you know. They would have just converted them into their way. You see, some the, we think the enemy really wants to kill us. The enemy just wants to convert us. The enemy wants to get into our head to make sure that we divert our praise and we do not do what is written, what is God's rightful desire for us. So I want us, just let us use this morning to as, as, as the day of spring. You see what it is? You see, God never make a mistake. This month that we in, uh, you know, as we know, it's 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 um Passover, and who understand it, understand it, and who doesn't, doesn't. But use this morning as 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 a, as 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 the day of spring. Let the word of God spring up in you like a fresh morning dew, so that you could come to understand and you would see the enemy as David saw the enemy when David reached and David saw what was going on. You know, his brother, was, his brother wasn't too happy. What are you doing here? When he realized that David uh, making conversation to find out what is happening? Why is the Philistines so hot on all your heels? What it is happening that you God are serving the God of Israel and David is in his own, in his own understanding decide to take the matter up and ask a question. What is happening? Why, why aren't these people defeated yet? Why aren't these people defeated yet? Why are these people who's coming to try to spoil the show? Why are these people who coming to speak hypocrisy and lies? Why are these seducers? Why aren't they defeated yet? Hallelujah this morning. I want us to ask yourself a question. Why aren't these people who's bringing doctrines of devils, why aren't they defeated yet? David said, guess what? When David turned around, he realized, he said, wait, isn't this the uncircumcised? What is going on here? What is happening here? You got to understand who you are and who the enemy is. You got to understand who the, who the, who's bringing the doctrine of devils. You see what happened? What we want to do is that we want to condone everybody because your head tie, my head tie. You have apron, I have apron. You have spirit, I have spirit. We are not all under the almighty God. We are not, we are not sanctified in the same way. Hallelujah this morning. So David turned around and he said, hey, do you understand the difference because between circumcised and uncircumcised? Uncircumcised cannot defeat the circumcised. And we all love to use the word. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? But do we really understand what is being said this morning? And David, <laughs> David decided to turn around and say, well, guess what? The God of Israel, The God of Israel this morning, hallelujah. The God of Israel is capable and able if you use him at the present moment. Use him. Let him. And David decide that he won't even wear. He won't even wear the, 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 the outfit, the shield that they give him. You see, if God had given the shield, he might have put it on. It's the same intimidated soul. Sometimes it's the same intimidated elder. They are self-intimidated coming to tell you, well, look, take a piece of cloth and protect yourself now. Take a, look, put a ban here. Take a string and put it on your hand and that go keep. It can't keep away seduction. Hallelujah, this morning, only the word of God. Jesus, this morning, I thank you, Holy Spirit. They give they, they give David this the, 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 the breastplate. The thing it bigger than him. It can't even allow him to 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 take a position properly to defeat the enemy. David said, "Well, I will. I won't be able to wear this." And I just want to juggle our minds because sometimes we don't realize that that we 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 going to you. We want things to put on us, thinking that will that will that will keep away the enemy. Uh huh. When a seducer and a devil come to speak seductive words to you, that you can have on 10,000 color band. Unless the word of God is not written on the tables of our heart, brethren, 
unless the word of God is not, it doesn't stain us. You know, you know, uh, Saul's son is Jonathan. Did the same thing in him. Because this Saul constantly, constantly trying to find something to replace the almighty God. You can't replace God. You can't replace his word for protection or to conquer or to overcome. But Jonathan decide, guess what? You see, you Saul, you is the elder. You stay sleeping on the, the pomegranate tree and he get himself and he snake to show that God is God. Hallelujah. This morning, we bless the Lord. I want us to bless the Lord, you know. I want us to bless the Lord because I'm telling you, this is such a, a magnifying topic. This is such a magnifying topic. It is the show. We are seeing it with our very eyes. People don't want to marry no more. We are actually seeing it with our very eyes. People are forbidding to marry. People are using excuses. They're giving the modernized reasons. Hallelujah. This morning, I bless the Lord. I, I took a simple approach. Very simple. And I said, let me, let me look at the definition of the word rehearsal and 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 it says that this is where participants dresses in their role the role that they play they dress in their costume uh, as they would at the main show uh practicing their best performance and i said oh it's a performance in a dress rehearsal, it's a performance. It's never genuine. It's an act. It's an act that you would put on and play a role. You know, John 6, 20, it says that there were people, there were people who wanted to perform God's work. So they were asking Jesus, what shall we do to be able to practice the works of God? Keep in mind, they wasn't interested in saving souls. In the dress rehearsal, it is a performance. It's not genuine. This is why we who are in this show, we who are seeing the unfoldment of the show, we want to continuously ask God for discerning eyes so we can be able to discern a performance from the real deal. They wasn't interested in saving souls, nor were they preparing for the great day. The word of God said they were fed. When you read the lesson, it says that they were fed a few days ago. So they were seeking God now for more. The scripture actually says that they ate bread and they were filled. So they were not genuine in running after Christ. They, they wanted to perform the work that God did. They wanted to just play a part so that they can receive more bread. When you go back and you read the 627, that came from 628. And 627 said, Jesus had to answer them. He had to turn and reply to them. And he said, listen. He said, listen, the, 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 the works of God is not labored for, for meat, you know. The works of God, you don't do the works of God for meat, for your own gain. He said, because guess what? That meat will perish. That meat is going to perish. We don't want our works to look like a performance. We who are in this spiritual journey, we are who are in this spiritual faith. We want to set our affections on the things above. Not on things that would perish, knowing how to do this or do that, just to, for our own gain. They were looking to gain for themselves. 
They wanted to fill their belly again. But we know that our God is capable to bring manna to hungry souls. So this morning, I, 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 I don't want us to, I want us to be aware because in the seduction, in the seducing, when people are seducing people, they tend to show them and perform works. They tend to show them and perform and perform, perform things to, to charm the eyes or to charm the individual. But I'm telling you, be reminded. Be reminded on what matters. You know, I thought of John. And most people saw John when he came as the forerunner, John, John the Baptist in the wilderness. John wearing, wearing camel hair. That's what John wore. Because he had to set the stage for Jesus. And the scripture said that John wore camel hair and he ate locusts and wild honey. John had to do the work of God, which is preach that word in the wilderness where nobody was. I don't know if they thought John was wearing a costume or if he was performing or whatever the people thought. Well, they had many thoughts. They thought he was Elias. They didn't even know who he was. But when I thought about it, I say, have we ever considered that John wore what he wore and ate what he ate to be separated, to remain sanctified, to remain holy, to be put to use so that the Lord can use him. It's only when you are sanctified and holy. It's not, wasn't a costume. It wasn't just because he chose to, to dress up. I mean, we know they didn't have much material in those days, but the Pharisees was well-dressed in the, in the gown. But he was set apart for the master's use. His thought and his affection was set on things above. So it really didn't matter to him what it had to eat at that moment or what it had to wear or what he had to do. To imp it wasn't an impressing thing for him. He didn't come out to make an impression. And when we look today, if, it's, if you're not impressive, brethren, this is not a game for me, you know. If it's not impressive in, in, in the culture that we are in today, you, you ain't making it, you know. They don't know you. They don't care to know you. I really not into that kind of show. I'm not into that kind of game. This is a serious matter. I was wondering this morning if I'm really the right person. I'm telling you because... Uh, uh, I, 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 I know I'm not illiterate when it comes to certain things or the, oh, you know, technology, but I, my spirit and it just can't meet. We just can't work. So I try to bring myself a little down to be able to relate. And I pray God for those of us who, who, who desire to perform the works of God. We do it because we want to be sons and daughters of the kingdom not to impress anybody or not to make a show or a boast of ourselves, hallelujah. This morning, the songwriter said we do it not for ease or worldly pleasure, not for fame my rest shall be, but gladly will I toil and suffer. Only let me walk with thee, hallelujah. We praise God this morning. I give God the praise this morning. I want to urge us to be very careful. You know, sometimes we are, we are, I want us to, I want to urge, let us be careful. Myself, my surrounding, yourself, your surrounding, and whoever we can reach. Let us bring them, let us make them aware. I, 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 I know we, we, we know it, and I know we, we know, we know what the scriptures say would befall us in the latter days. We know that, what, that, that men are going to be, be hypocrites. We know that they are going to, 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 what the scriptures say. They, we know that they are not going to, to, to be encouraging us to, to follow God. We know that they are going to divert our godly nature. We know that, that, that they are going to give, many of us are going to fall away. 
and give heed to seducing spirits and give, give heed to false doctrine. False doctrine. What is this doctrine teaching? The doctrine of men. What men is teaching? Old works. Old works. Brethren, I, I am telling you serious, live, live, real thing. People are boasting. We did a sacrifice last night. Gil, you know, we don't see you. How we don't, we don't see you. Gil, we had a sacrifice last night. Your sacrifice and your new moon, my soul hated. What, I, I, you know, I, I felt a little numb. Not because I was trying to be judgmental, because I, 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 had, I was looking, making sure that the Holy Spirit brought the right word to me to say to the individual. You know, I, what, the only thing I could have said was, um, uh, who, 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 who are you giving the sacrifice to? And she said, I, I don't know, you know. And I felt, I felt so, I felt hurt. I felt, I felt hurt. I felt pain and I felt, Redwin, you don't understand. I felt hurt. I'm saying, who bewitched you? Who, who bewitched you to, to go against or to practice what God say my soul hated? What is happening? What is what what is happening? It's being it's it's right in front of our eyes. So I urge us that sometimes when you know when we're not aware, always be on watchful eyes. You know, I went somewhere and I said to them, I said, listen, I am not a Roman. I don't want us, brethren, do not become a Roman. You don't have to go to Rome and do as the Romans do. I'm saying that to you this morning. I said to them, I said, I'm not a Roman. When I come here, I don't have to do what you do. Some wants to be what they see. Nobody's reading the script. Nobody, there's always a script for a show. There's always a script. Read your script. All we're treading on is that we have the gift and we have the, we have the gift of that was promised from the bank of a Jordan, you know, and let me act my role. That's what's happening is that everybody's acting their, their role. Who is prophet? They were, they prophes they, they're prophesying, but it's all being done. If it's being done, if it's being hosted in an unclean vessel, what you think you're going to be pouring out? You can't host the word of God or try to do it in an unclean vessel. That is not how it works. It becomes a performance and the performance brings temporary gratification and self-promotion. I want to tell you, it brings self-promotion. Are we in this for self-promotion? You know, I do listen to scriptural uh motivational speakers i do and and some of them and and um there was one and he was saying that nowadays when you ask most young people or most people who are striving for better what is your what 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 do you endeavor what do you you know what, what what's your goal for this life and most people say they want to be the greatest of all times they want to be the goat and I listen to him and I say, oh, but there's a reading about the G-O-A-T. Yeah, there's a reading according to the book of Matthew. And, you know, he said, they, they say they want to be the greatest because, you know, and to do that, you have to promote yourself. But the word of God say in the book of Matthew, that there is a thing, and I want to read it, just so that we can be, we can, we can understand that it's okay to be the best. 
But it's another thing when you're doing it for self. Hallelujah. And it says here, and when the son of man shall come in his glory and all his holy angels with him, then he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats and he shall set the sheep on the right and the goat on the left. So if for whatever reason you know someone or you yourself felt a little bewitched that in our culture, this greatest of all times is the thing. Remind yourself that the word of God said to be the greatest of all times is, is the G O A T. You're going to be a goat. And God promised that he's going to separate sheep from goat. There is nothing to benefit as a goat when it comes to the word of God. Hallelujah. So we bless the Lord. We bless the Lord this morning. We bless God this morning. And we give him praise. And we give him thanks. I, wanna, I want us to stay encouraged. I want us to serve God. I want us to stay with a mindset that this is not time. This is not time to wonder what part of the show you're playing. If yourself you didn't figure it out yet, uh, make sure that it's not performing. You're not performing. Even so, you feel that you're not at, you don't have to be at a standard brethren. You don't have to be, you're not, we are not all the same. We cannot walk in the, in, like in the teacher's shoe. We are who we are, we are, there are levels, but we all can carry out the same task. We were, it, it was mandated that we all are disciples and we are responsible for the script, for the word of God. We are responsible to read it. We are responsible to remind each other of it. So this morning, I, 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 I bless God. I do work with the Holy Spirit and it doesn't matter where I reach in, in speaking. I try to, I try to really, be, I try to be more of myself, but I can't. So whenever I get cut off and the Holy Spirit tell me you, it's enough, I do pause. So I want us to understand, let us not be in this show because we want to be the greatest of all times. Remember what the scriptures say, Matthew 23, 11. Who is the greatest among you? Who is the greatest among you? Your servant. Serving is an act that reflects who we are. If we want to be great, let us serve and serve God. Because the disciples asked that question. Master, who is the greatest among you? Your servant. Jesus served, brethren. The Bible said Jesus served. The fact that Jesus laid aside the garment took a towel, he took a, a, a servant's apparel and good himself to wash his disciples' feet. Some of us would say, guess what? You know, he only washed it because on, in those days, the journey was so long, everybody's foot used to be dirty and dusty, so he had to wash it. He had to wash, demonstrate, the servant is not greater. The Lord is not greater than the servant. And when Jesus step in to wash you, the word of God said that you even realize that they were not all clean. The word of God is going to help us get to that cleaning stage. So I want us to serve. 
even though your your lights or your your stage might be bigger don't let it get to your head pay attention to the show that the book of timothy is telling us be strong don't let nobody seduce you i am saying it plain how uh, uh, how are our, our young boys how their affection is changing to become lovers of themselves how is that happening seduction somebody is giving them somebody is is messing with the mind of our of our children who how are we what are, what stand are we taking but i want to tell you who would be able to stand? He that have a clean hands and a pure heart, we will be able to stand up against them. So we gotta, I just want us to encourage us, keep our heart and our hands clean and pure. I have no doubt. I have no doubt what God is able to do. I bless God this morning. I bless God this morning. I bless God this morning because I know God is, he's gonna do it. Once he know that we have, we have, we believe it, we receive it, we believe it, that now we need him in the fight. We need him in the fight, him in us, so that we can manifest. We want him sweating through our pores. We don't wanna leave room because when you remain casual, you'll be defeated. So I bless God this morning, hallelujah. I give God praise and I give God thanks for each and every listening ear. And to each and every one that rise up this morning, I, I pray God that you really have a burst, a burst of, 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 of fresh, a fresh encounter with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning. Thank you for your listening.